learn how to do this and really impress your shop teacher. Oh, yeah. Recording. Uh, believe, believe me, they never seen anything like that. And they're here for another hour. Hopefully, there's a whole lot of hours. I know there's a lot of people that are going to be here. Here, um, of how these interconnect to each other. This is got kind of a stair steppy look to it. Those are nice. Uh, spiral and steps, a spiral stair. Um, you just do 90 degrees. I did, I did um, 90, 90, 90. I got two in this segment, and then I switched to 180 degrees out here uh, from where I was at. So, um, do you do, do you do most of your sanding off the lathe? No, I actually sand each segment. That's one of the, the notes um, that I put in this tutorial. If anybody wants it, um, I can email it to you. Just email it to me and then I'll yeah, send it out send to it So there's, there's a tutorial in here. Um, and like I said, the, the Dremel or the, the rotary tool is great for getting, and, and I can get this fairly close back in here, but it still leaves a little bit of a flat area because you start getting so thin, nice, nice and then you there. contour with the rotary tool or with the uh, microplane or with the uh, Good uh, with some coarse sandpaper to get through those. But it's it's pretty neat, and that, and again, if this thing, if I could keep this stable enough, turn it up to you know 12, 1500 or more RPM. Um, gives you cleaner cuts, you know, with a sharp tool, 
give you much cleaner cuts, and it actually helps you see the, the air, the ghost, better uh, when you're turning faster. Um, one of the notations I put in here is that, uh, okay, so start, start shaping the piece beginning with your mid cuts uh, and working your way up your segment space. Uh, use small cuts, chop lathe, um, stop lathe often so you can look at your progress. Um, that's important because you can easily get through and be in a position where the end is going to come off and, and you can't um, you can't do anything with it. But when you took five and a half hours to do this, how many times did you sharpen your tool? Uh, twice. Twice? Yeah. And, and I, I just did a real light. I had everything set when I sharpened it when I started. I left everything set. I went back, hit it two passes, was sharp again. Um, so the one thing about this is that uh, you can't be too aggressive because you will not be rewarded for being aggressive doing this thing. So, anyway, questions? How secure is it in the chuck? Right? I mean, is it? Is it? Can you? Well, you you can you can see I was turning at a low speed, which puts more pressure on this thing. Part of the reason why I said I like the dovetails, it, and you do a dovetail on your tenon, it it also is going to keep you from wanting to pull out. How, how deep is it into the chuck, meaning, or how close are you to the bottom of the chuck? Oh, close me. I'm bottomed on the, on the underside, and at the top, well, oh, you're uh, saying in this thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's bearing on the, on the upper part of the jaw, which is where it's supposed to be. It's not supposed to be bearing mm -hmm. down at the bottom. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be bearing up here, but it's almost to the bottom. When you are halfway through, can you go back to the first step? No, never. Well, theoretically you could if you got all your settings exactly right, because if you don't get it back exactly, then you're going to be cutting new space that you hadn't cut before. Okay, um, one of the things... Question. Jerry. If you are bigger, if you have a bigger uh, base, mm -hmm. uh, are you always using the same... Uh, uh, setting of the same piece of wood, the size, the diameter. For the base. Can you go bigger? You mean bigger in diameter? Yeah. Well, you could go bigger, but it'd be an awful lot of wasted wood. I, I mean, if anything, I'd glue a, but you a made, contrasting piece of wood. But you make bigger curves. Oh, absolutely. You could go to a 3x3 three three or 4x4. Four four. Um, I mean, you're only limited by how big your lathe will go well, to a point. But it becomes more difficult. But to contrary this, the bigger the piece of wood is, the deeper you have to be able to cut in there. Exactly. The smaller Which means the tool you got to use, the wider you the call wider it, your, your undercut has got to yeah. be. So if you want so there's a small a point. and tight, your wood has to be fairly small. Yeah. You go to a large diameter wood, then the your cones are going to be greater big because you're not going to be able to get in them. I, I think the two and a half inch diameter is a good number. Um, I did do one out of three inches and it was one of my longer ones. Um, so I had a little more space to work with and I used two and a half inch segments instead of two inch segments. So anything a foot or less, I use two inch segments just as gauges. I mean, they're, they're just there to say, okay, this is where I want to start. This is somewhere in this area. It's not cast in stone. So my first one I did, I scored every one of them with a parting tool, which was a mistake. And you can't get away with yeah, that. exactly. And I, I made myself more work than I needed to. So now I just do a big carpenter's pencil and do a mark uh, for each of my segments. But um, this, I, I would do this until it got probably to about right here. Um, and just keep chipping away at this. Um, and then I would do another segment in here, in, or um, another layer. So I would get two elements in this segment based on where I've gotten this right now. What would happen if you try to turn a bowl off angle? What would, can you do that? A bowl? It wouldn't. Theoretically, you can. One rim would be higher than the other. Theoretically, you can. I, I have, the, the reason why I said I've done this before, I did a box 
was a long rectangular box and I turned it on three axes. So it is hollow all the way through on the inside, but the walls you gotta loop here very thick because on some, you remove it most of it, on the other you loop everything. So your wall thickness has gotta be inch and a half. And, and the same thing, I mean, uh, um, come on, bud, you can do it. Igor said earlier was that the more you have to undercut by the larger diameter you go, you have to start undercutting back in here to get what you want up here. Because otherwise your tool, and that's where a skew would work. If you were proficient with a skew, you could, you wouldn't have to undercut as much for a larger diameter piece. And you could run your skew in there um, and deal with it. I'm just not proficient with a skew to the point that I would even try one of these with it. So I'm still, like I said earlier, I typically use the skew to take the corners off to get round at the beginning just so I can practice using it and I might do a little trying to turn a bead or something with it, but haven't got it yet. I've used the uh, ball gouges before, a really small sharp ball gouges. Here's, here's yeah. my other one, um, almost in a fingernail, yep. um, which I use when I get right up in here, very close. And I do some of my finish cuts, even inside of this rough, I'll do some of my finish cuts with this because you have to, to, to get some of the, the dimensional area uh, between each of your, your um, elements within the segment. So. It is very cool. Yeah, I, I, uh, like I said, when I did the first five, two of which were broken and I repaired, um, when I did those, I said, when I finished them, I said, I'm done. I'm not doing this again. <laughs> but I started, I started that, uh, that other one uh, that took me five hours and 15 minutes. I went in uh, on Tuesday um, so I could get ready for this prep. And I turned it, and it was like, eh, this is OK. I wouldn't want to do it regularly, but it's fun. Well, you probably cut down an hour um, with practice. Um, yeah, the, the element is your proficiency and, and you know, how you turn. I, I keep trying to envision I want something a little different. This, this was a little bit of a practice on this element right here where it literally, it isn't, it isn't straight, it's, it's kind of rounded. Um, and I tried to do it up above and I couldn't get it. And then down here, it just, it was there and I went, oh, I did it. <laughs> but I don't know how I did it, so it's crazy. Anyway, that's my, uh, my lesson. I'll send uh, Lara the, uh, uh, the tutorial on it. Um, and if anybody, uh, sure. When you start sanding this, do you put it center? No. Oh, well, when I do the ball, is I do that center, and I do the base back in, in the neutral position. So the first cut and the bowl for the, the candlestick um, and the base, I do on center. Everything else is offset in between. And you sand And I section. sand each element. When I, if, if I was to finish this, if I was to finish this cut, I would sand all of this. I sanded all of this. This is easy. I could go back and resand this. But I sanded this piece to um, 150 all the way down. And I left the tenon on because I want to put it back in and go through so I've got something to hold on and I can turn the chuck and do the sanding on this. If you turn real slow, you can get your finger in between here with a piece of paper uh, on your on your tip and tip of your finger and you can get it in there and you can do both sides um, the upper and the lower element in each of these segments just about in any position it's in but I try to sand I do the heavy sanding and the rotary tool um, at each segment so that I'm moving down the road. Could you use a dowel or something with well, you can use, you know, there, there's all kinds of, roll up the, the, the sandpaper, you could put a dowel in and do it. I just, 
you know, one of these fingers works good. I'd just be afraid I'd lose one of these fingers. Well, you're only turning maybe at 20 or 30 RPM. Yeah, you got slow. Yeah, so you're going real slow. Mango is 500. Yeah. One question, bud. Mm -hmm. Where did you say you sourced those little gold? Oh, these? Cups? I went on Amazon and they're called um, uh, candle, candle cups. Okay. Um, and they actually have full cups mm -hmm. that you can put down in here that are, you know, closed in at the bottom. And when I was looking through those, I did find these, which is what I was looking for. Uh, but I did it on uh, did it on Amazon. They were like, I think they were about 11 or 12 cents a piece. I think I bought 30 of them. They were like 11 or 12 cents a piece. Okay. But you can get 50 for 4 cents a piece if you want 50 of them. Okay. Yeah, I'm done. I'm going to clean up. So, if you guys want to do the.